the Euphrates is crying. It's the end of the world. Well, I want to bring you good news. It is exactly the opposite. And the angel revealed to Daniel that 70 years of seven will be upon the people on the city unto the temple. And it concludes the whole downfall of Jerusalem. And it was broken up in seven weeks, 62 weeks. And in the middle of the final week, Christ was crucified and broke the covenant with Israel. And then from the stoning of Stephen, it started the day of vengeance. So from the cross to the final taking out of the whole system, was a 40-year period or the day of vengeance. The fall of Babylon, 539 BC, was a physical event. The fall of Jerusalem, mystical Babylon, was 70 AD. It was a spiritual event. The kingdom came at the cross, but the Holy Spirit signified that no one could enter while this old was still a recognized institution. So when the old was removed, the kingdom was opened. It's a total different period. All this happened in the time of Rome. The law was a shadow of the good things to come, but now they allied with Rome to take out the Christ, and they brought the day of vengeance on themselves. It is very important to understand these principles in the Spirit and understand the times in the Bible, for we cannot change time or history. The Euphrates drying up, in the book of Revelation has a specific meaning because at that stage <laughs> he says Babylon burned and Babylon never burned. The promised land was no more a natural place because now it's like the focus is set on to getting the glory of God to fill the earth. Babylon was conquered and did not burn. Revelation was written after 65 AD and Jerusalem burned in 70 AD, Revelation 18, 18. And they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying, what city is like unto this great city? In Isaiah 1, he says, how has this city become a harlot? Israel became the harlot that was riding the beast of which Babylon was the head. Then it was Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome was the legs, the strength of the statue or the image of the beast. Euphrates dried up spiritually in the book of Revelation, and it had to do with mystical Babylon. It meant that the old is now gone, and we cannot turn back to a promised land in Cana. We're not going to rebuild the temple. We are the temple. We can't ascend and visit the new Jerusalem. We are now the new Jerusalem. Why would you turn back to the old if it was only a shadow while the real is living inside of us? God wants us to have this light life and bring this light life into this dark world. Revelation is not dealing with our time. Revelation opened the door on our time. Revelation refers to the total destruction of Jerusalem and the sacrifice system by fire. Babylon was long gone by then and only ruins remained. Revelation 17, 4, verse 6. And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet color, decked with gold, precious stones and pearls, having the golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was the name written mystery babylon the great mother of harlots abominations of the earth i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great admiration israel forced jesus to take the cup the night he was betrayed. He said, this is the cup in the New Testament in my blood. Drink of it. The next day, he said, oh God, let this cup pass from me. He was not referring to the same cup. Now he's referring to the taking out of his own people to deal with the first Adam so that the second man can be birthed. The prophets warned about Babylon and the fall and the destruction. 
Isaiah 121 says, How has this city become the harlot? She's the one that was riding the beast. So in actual fact, it was Israel, the Jews, his own people, that took him to the cross. They just used Rome. Eventually, Rome turned on them and destroyed them. It's like a Haman and Mordecai story. What you've planned for others happens to you. Now everybody's talking about the Euphrates drying up and the prophecies in Revelation. It has nothing to do with our time. It was a spiritual happening that followed physical Babylon that's now happened to spiritual Babylon, mystical Babylon. Now what about the Euphrates drying up now? Well, if you look at the news, all the rivers are drying up all over the world. And if it doesn't dry up, it's being flooded. And if it's not flooded, it's fire. It's water and fire. Isaiah prophesied and said, we will go through the water, through the fire. But the drying of the Euphrates has a very significant spiritual implication, meaning the time has come that the glory of God is going to fill the earth. Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says it clear, You fool, do you not know? Unless it dies, it cannot be quickened. And we want to keep everything going, but we cannot read the signs of the time. The drying of the Euphrates has such a spiritual, awesome connection. If we misunderstand it, we will be going round the mountain, round the mountain. Well, David prophesied and he says, who will go up the hill? You can only go up into the hill if you go into the purposes of God. And his purpose is for the glory to fill the earth. Hebrews 12, you are come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels. And God wants us to go up the mountain, but because we do not understand and Bible prophecies and we mix times and seasons, all we do is go round and round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Well, God wants us to go up the mountain. But you cannot go up this mountain unless you have a single mind. He says, who will go up? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart. Purify your heart, you double-minded. The end is not destruction. The destruction is preparing for the end of time to come. The end is found in Numbers 14, 21. As truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. From the beginning, the end is set as rest. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that you can be where I am and I will receive you unto myself. Well, <laughs> The kingdom is that place he has prepared and the whole earth is waiting for the sons to take up their rulership as kings. Romans 8.22 For we know that the whole of creation groans and travails and is in pain together until now. And these pains get worse the more time goes on. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. God's word is forever set in the heavens. Earth is preparing for something only God can do. The place called there will be everywhere. Joel 2.21 describes it so beautiful. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures and the wilderness do spring, and the tree will bear a fruit. The fig tree and the vine shall heal their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, the church, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain and the latter in the first month, meaning in one. The floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I send amongst you. God's word is set in the heavens from the beginning, and he has not lost control.